Hi, this is Dave Johnson for the Tolkien Society. We're at Oxford at, Oxford at Lady Margaret Hall, uh, and we have the great pleasure uh, to be here to do an interview with John Garth. So, John, thank you very much for speaking to us today. It's an absolute thank pleasure. Thank you. Um, first of all, can you just tell us a little bit about you know why you're here? What's so special about this uh, time of year? It's the 100th anniversary of Middle Earth, um, and not a lot of people know that. Um, so I've been here to talk about why that is. Now, Middle Earth, uh, its great hallmark is that there's, it's underpinned by invented languages. In fact, it was created to give a home for these invented languages. Um, so Tolkien's statement that in the, when the First World War broke out, he realised there was this interconnection between legends and languages is really fascinating. And I wanted to dig deeper into what exactly that meant. Mm -hmm. um, and I do that by looking at the two pieces of creative writing he was producing in September, October 1914. This is a poem about Arendel. Now, Arendel is a famous mariner uh, who appears in the Silmarillion and the Lord of the Rings. Um, but he sprang into life uh, in this one poem, September the 24th, 1914. Um, and uh, the, other, the other aspect was that Tolkien was also working on uh, an adaptation of a Finnish folk story, uh, the story of Kalervo. Mm -hmm. um, and both of these things dovetail in the process of Tolkien realising the connection between languages and legends. Mm -hmm. To most people, Middle Earth probably begins with the publication of The Hobbit in 1937. But the 24th of September 1914 was the day Middle Earth came into being, with the words, Erendel sprang up from the ocean's cup in the gloom of the mid-world's rim. The opening lines of a poem Tolkien called The Voyage of Erendel, The Evening Star. You did a lecture today. What were you talking about tonight? I was talking about um, the great conundrum Tolkien set, um, talking about his experiences in 1914 uh, when he made his great creative breakthrough. In particular, I'll look at Tolkien's statement that it was just as the 1914 war burst on me that I made the discovery that legends depend on the language to which they belong. But a living language depends equally on the legends which it conveys by tradition. What does he mean by that? How did he make the discovery? Did it all come from nowhere with this one poem, The Voyage of Erendel, The Evening Star? Your book, Tolkien and the Great War, um, can you just give us a little bit of an insight? What was your inspiration behind writing it? Well, I was really fascinated by uh, the process of the invention of Middle Earth and it, fr from way back when, and also the connection with the languages. So I was reading some of Tolkien's earliest uh, writings, the Book of Lost Tales, and the poetry that he was writing prior to that. Now, this was 1915, 1916, and I noticed that he was writing these things in military camps yeah. during army training. And even um, on, on the brink of the Battle of the Somme in 1916. So I, I, I was fascinated. Why was this man writing what were effectively fairy stories when the soldiers around him were going into this terribly disenchanting war and coming out with things like, you know, the Wilfred Owen's astonishing uh, war poetry, very brutal, very realistic. Yeah. Um, so it, it raised a big question. I wanted to answer that question, and I explored his his experiences um, and what he was the, the the exact processes of his creative life during that period. How has the response been to the book? And I've been really pleased. Um, uh, there were some tremendous reviews. Um, it, 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 I was fortunate enough to surf on the back of Peter Jackson's third Lord of the Rings movie, so the newspapers were very keen to promote anything to do with Tolkien, or at least to highlight it. So it got plenty of attention. Um, and among uh, those who know Tolkien, um, it seems to have given real food for thought. Um, and to some extent, transformed the idea of Tolkien um, and made people focus on him as a young man mm -hmm. um, rather than the, the, you know, the elderly professorial figure that we always see in the photographs. Um, and in the wider world, I mean, the, the, the book's been used um, in, in mainstream histories now too, um, uh, and uh, that's, that's, that's tremendous. Um, with the centenary of the First World War, I'm getting uh, the opportunity to talk about Tolkien to wider audiences, um, and, uh, uh, and the book won the Mythopoeic Award for 
scholarship, which was a, a tremendous honour too. Mm-hmm. So are you spending your time travelling around doing other talks and lectures? I have spoken um, in Italy and Germany so far this year. I'm going back to Germany later and France too um, and several places in Britain. Yeah. So you're open to more offers? I am indeed. Very good. Um, the uh, What's your next project? What's the next things you're working on? I still have a lot to say about the uh, effect of... Tolkien's war experiences on what he wrote. Um, and I'd also really like to um, bring out more about uh, his, his group of friends, um, the TCBS, the, the former school friends who also went and fought in the First World War. Um, and two of those, two of the four, uh, were killed in the Battle of the Somme. Um, um, and uh, there's a tremendous amount of correspondence left, particularly by, by, by one member, uh, that I think ought to see the light of day. So that's that's one project, yeah. Does does every time you do a project, does it open up a new door and a new a new, a new area of study? Constantly, um, I have just published um, a booklet, Tolkien at Exeter College: How Our an Oxford Undergraduate Invented Middle Earth, um, and. My talk here at Oxenmoot actually sprang from uh, a desire to. to improve a couple of paragraphs in that uh, and making that investigation turned into a very large uh, scholarly paper mm-hmm. a separate, separate thing from that booklet That's fantastic, Where, so where is that available from? Um, the, the, the booklet um, my book Tolkien in the Great War you can find out all about them on my website um, or you can go to my blog and that links to my website mm-hmm. yeah. uh, And are you available on Facebook as well? I am indeed yeah. Fantastic Well, John, thank you very much for the interview today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Cheers.